Hi, I'm Dr. Leachman. I'm a professor of economics at Duke University, and I'm here to give you a little mini lecture on profit loss break even in a perfectly competitive setting. And uh, to do that, I am going to share my notes with you and walk you through the lecture. Okay, so in this video, as I've said before, I'm gonna show you profit loss break even and even the shutdown decision for a perfectly competitive firm. Recall that there are four characteristics of a perfectly competitive market. Number one, you have a large number of small firms. Number two, they produce a homogeneous product, which means that each firm product is exactly like the other firms so that they are all identical and they are perfect substitutes for each other. The next characteristic is free entry and exit. That's going to matter because that's going to drive each firm in the industry to break even in the long run. And the last characteristic is the fact that the firms are price takers. What this means is that the firm only has one operating decision, and that is how much to produce. The price will be determined in the market by the intersection of market demand and supply. And then because each firm is so small relative to the total market output and his product is exactly like everyone else's product in the industry, the demand curve for the firm is infinite at that market price. To see that, you will see that I have the industry demand curve, the industry supply curve here, and the market determined price. So this is the market. And this is the firm. At that P star, demand is infinite uh, because the firm is so small relative to the total size of the market. And demand and price are equal to marginal revenue. This is the only industry where this is the case because the firm doesn't have to lower price to sell more. Why would he when he can sell all he wants at the current market price? So I've just written that here. This means that the firm can sell all he or she wants at P star. And that means there's no reason to lower price because you don't sell more if you can already sell all you want. And there's no reason to raise price through things like advertising expenditures because your product is just like everybody else's and it doesn't differentiate you or get you anything else. And so demand, price, marginal revenue, are all the same for the perfectly competitive firm and they are determined by the market, not the firm. So first we're gonna look at the break-even situation. But before I do that, I need to, re to review all the cost curves with you. Remember that we have four major cost curves. We have average fixed costs, which are the cost of our fixed inputs like capital and uh, long-term leases uh, pensions in big industry, et cetera, that is always downward sloping. And as it turns out, not particularly important for the operating decision, uh, essentially, but is important for profit or loss. We have average variable costs, which is U-shaped, declines and then increases. And then we have average total costs that first looks like average fixed cost, and then takes the uh, shape of average variable costs because they become more important. And then most importantly, we have the marginal cost curve, which has a very precise relationship to average variable and average total. It intersects average variable and average total at its minimum point. This was what we called the marginal average rule. Wherever marginal cost is above average variable or average total cost, they are uh, increasing out here. And whenever marginal cost is below average variable and average total over here, they are decreasing. Finally, we have the decision rule for determining Q star and P star if we have that option. And that's always where marginal cost equals marginal revenue, where the cost of the last unit just equals the revenue generated from the sale of the last unit. 
And using this as a decision rule, essentially what we're doing is we're capturing all those contributions to profit before that point where marginal revenue is greater than marginal cost. And we have to capture all those contributions to profit in order to be a profit maximizer, which is our assumption. So first, let's look at the break even because this is where all firms end up in perfect competition in the long run. And it is what makes perfect competition perfect. So recall demand, price, marginal revenue are set in the marketplace. And the demand is infinite to the firm. The decision rule is where marginal cost equals marginal revenue. That sets Q star. Total revenue is P star times Q star. So that's this big orange box. Total cost is my per unit cost. Use a different color which is where that Q star hits average total cost. That's my per unit cost times the number of units I produce. That's my total cost. Average total cost, my per unit cost times Q star. They are exactly equal, which is break even. That means that economic profit is zero and accounting profit is positive and equal to the opportunity cost, the cost of your next best choice. Essentially, the accounting profit is reflective of a normal rate of return in that industry. And that will vary from industry to industry based on the characteristics of the industry, primarily the risk associated with producing that good or service. So the economic profit is zero, but the accounting profit is positive and just equal to your next best choice. That's what keeps you in there and uh, keeps you from making a change decision. Now, there are two things to note about this that make perfect competition perfect. Okay, the first one is at QSTAR, that is uh, also at the minimum point of average total cost. What that means is the firm produces at the most efficient output level possible given its costs. This is what we call minimum efficient scale, which I've written here. The second thing that is special about this is that P star, the price only reflects the cost of delivery of that good or service, and it does so at the most efficient output level possible. And what that means is that price has perfect information in it. There's nothing else in price uh, like excess profit, like expenses for advertising that uh, make the goods seem more desirable uh, than it is. And so these two things, the fact that in the long run, all firms produce at minimum efficient scale and the most efficient output level possible and price only reflects the real cost of delivering that good or service are what make perfect competition perfect. And this is why we study it, because while there's nothing uh, that approximates perfect competition in the real world, because even eggs are white and brown and free range, uh, it gives us a way to assess what's not present in other industries. And as I said before, in the long run, all firms due to free entry and exit will operate here. And I'll show you that at the end, how they get there, essentially. So next, next we want to look at the profit situation for a perfectly competitive firm. Again, the price will be set in the marketplace by demand and supply for the entire industry. And then the demand, which equals price equals marginal revenue, will be infinite as I've drawn it here for the perfectly competitive firm. The decision rule is once again, where marginal cost equals marginal revenue. That sets Q star, the only decision for the firm. And total revenue is P times Q 
star times Q star. And at that Q star, your total costs will be your per unit costs times the number of units you produce. So where the Q star hits average total cost, this is my per unit cost times the number of units I produce. So here is my total cost. Average total cost times Q star. And you will notice that this big purple box is less than this orange box. And the difference, these are my per unit contribution to profits times the number of units I sell. So this dashed area is profit. And here, economic profit is greater than zero, which means you're covering your opportunity cost and then some. So clearly, accounting profit would also be positive and even larger. And we will see at the end of this video that when there is profit, in the long run, what will happen is firms will enter and that will drive everyone back to break even. So next, let's look at the loss situation. Again, P star is set in the marketplace. It's equal to demand, equal to marginal revenue, where they intersect with marginal cost, gives you Q star. P star times Q star is total revenue. This orange box, total cost is my per unit cost, where this Q star hits average total cost. That's my per unit cost times all the units I produce. There's my total cost. Average total cost times Q star. The pink box is bigger than the orange box. So this is essentially my losses. Here, what means that economic profit is less than zero. You're making losses. You're not covering your opportunity costs. And we don't really know what's true about accounting profit. It can still be positive, zero, or even negative. Okay. And you would ask, why would a firm continue to produce in this situation? Uh, well, I want to show you that down here where there is a little less uh, going on. Okay. So I have my P star, Q star. And my total revenue is P times Q is this big blue box. Okay. And my total cost is the big purple box. But now I want to separate out my costs. Where that Q star hits average variable cost, this red box are my total variable costs. And the difference between average total and average variable is average fixed. So this black box is my total fixed cost. And this would be the cost I incur if Q star is zero, if I produce nothing. So by producing, I am covering this much of my fixed costs. So I minimize losses by producing. If P star 
is greater than average variable cost. You're covering all your variable costs. Uh, P star is greater than. And less than average total cost. So by not confronting all of my fixed costs, contributing to them, it is a solid operating decision to produce. And you might ask, well, who can do that? Well, the ones that will do that will be the ones that actually have the resources, have funding to get them through the loss situation and or have very positive expectations about the future recovery in that particular market. Finally, let's look at the shutdown situation. So now we have again P star determined in the market, equal to demand, equal to marginal revenue. Decision rule Q star where marginal cost equals marginal revenue. Total revenue is P star times Q star. It's this black box. Total cost. It's where that Q star hits average total cost. The big pink box. Okay, now let's break down that total cost. If the firm produces nothing, it confronts fixed costs. And settings. And average fixed cost, the difference between average total and average variable, that's my per unit fixed cost times the number of units. This is my total fixed cost which I have to pay no matter what. And look, my losses are larger than that. They're this whole dashed area. So I'm not covering my fixed cost and I'm not covering all of my variable cost. And I wouldn't confront the variable cost if I didn't produce. So here, since P star is less than average variable cost at Q star, the optimal decision is to shut down and pay only your fixed costs. So whenever price is below average variable cost, the firm will not produce. Finally, let me show you what drives the firms to break even. If I go back to the market, demand and supply up here, when there are profits, what will happen is firms will enter the industry. That will increase the supply due to profitability. That will cause the price to fall to P1 leading to a reduction in the demand curves for every remaining firm, driving them to break even. And if there are losses, firms will exit. That will drive price up to P2 increasing the demand for all the remaining firms so that once again, they break even. So I wanna take this moment to thank you for your time and attention. Uh, I hope you found this somewhat illuminating and I hope uh, that you find economics exciting because I know I do. Thank you, goodbye.